Welcome and thank you for taking the time to view this tutorial. This session will provide information for applicants who will include long-term homeless supportive housing units in their funding application. This session will cover the submission requirements for all applicants who plan to include long-term homeless units in their development, changes in 2016 for supportive housing, and I'll provide information on coordinated entry talk a little bit about Olmstead considerations for supportive housing, and tell you about a new resource that we have available this year, the National Housing Trust Fund. Here's a quick review of the basic requirements for applications with supportive housing units. These documents must be fully completed and submitted with your application to be eligible for long-term homeless points. For the supportive housing narrative, please make sure to thoroughly answer all of the questions to give us a good picture of your supportive housing plan. The owner, property management, and service provider need to work together to complete the narrative. And note that the development must have a designated service provider at the time of application to be considered feasible. The Continuum of Care, or COC, confirmation is a form that must be signed by the COC to confirm that the proposed units meet a need in the service area. The COCs in Greater Minnesota and the Metro Suburban Counties expect all applicants to provide information about the development to the COC before they'll sign the form. Most COCs meet monthly, so applicants need to contact the COC coordinator as soon as possible to make arrangements. Contact information is provided on the COC form. Note that the COC form is not required in Hennepin or Ramsey counties. The Human Services Confirmation Letter must also be submitted by the application due date, so please contact your Tribal or County Human Services Office as soon as possible so they have time to review your proposal and complete the letter. The last document is the Service Provider Qualification Form. This form can be submitted by the service provider any time before the RFP due date. There are also a few things that need to be correctly filled out on the workbook. In the proposed housing type field, be sure to enter the number of permanent supportive housing units for the development. And on the target population table, enter the number of long-term homeless units by the household type, families, singles, or youth. There are a few changes this year for supportive housing applications. Last year, we made a change to the priority for bonus points for LTH units. To align with the state's plan to prevent and end homelessness, Minnesota Housing made families and youth a top priority for supportive housing. For tax credit applications, this means that only applications with LTH units for families or youth will be eligible for the 100 bonus points. All LTH populations still qualify for the basic LTH points, but if units are targeted for single adults, they are not eligible for the bonus points. This year, we expanded the homelessness eligibility for families and youth. So, in addition to long-term homelessness, a household could be at risk of long-term homelessness, or an assessment through coordinated entry process could determine that they need supportive housing. We have also added points for addressing local COC priorities. Homelessness varies across the state, and each local area has different needs and resources. The COCs use their annual homeless point and time count and needs assessment data to determine their priorities for household types, families, singles, or youth, and for special target populations like veterans or people with mental illness, etc. Developers should carefully consider the local COC needs and priorities to determine the tiger population for the LTH units. And if you do take points for the priority subpopulation, please make sure to identify the population in the supportive housing narrative. Now I will talk about coordinated entry and how it works for supportive housing. Coordinated entry is a HUD requirement for the COCs, and state agencies also work require participation by all housing and service providers. The local CLCs are in different stages of implementing their coordinated entry systems, but this is basically how it works. 
Any person seeking homeless assistance can go to a central access point to apply for assistance. They won't have to go from office to office to find someone to help them. The central access point might be a shelter or a nonprofit service agency or both. The household will be assessed to determine the type of housing service they need. If the service is available, the household will be referred to the appropriate housing or service provider. If the appropriate service is not available at the time, the household will be placed on a waiting list. The households on the waiting list are prioritized by highest need. So, for supportive housing providers, when you have a unit available, you must notify the coordinated entry contact person. They will refer households to you from the top of the waiting list that appear to meet the eligibility criteria for the unit. The referred household will then go through your standard application process. The intent of the coordinated entry system is to match people to the right service and to use our scarce resources most effectively. Only people who truly need supportive housing will be referred to supportive housing units. We believe this will lead us one step closer to ending homelessness in Minnesota. And please note that all Minnesota housing finance developments that have LTH units must use coordinated entry for all referrals for open units. The Minnesota Olmstead Plan was approved by the court monitor in September of 2015. The plan is a broad series of key activities our state must accomplish to ensure people with disabilities are living, learning, working, and enjoying life in the most integrated setting. The plan will help people with disabilities have the opportunity to live close to their families and friends, live more independently, engage in productive employment, and participate in community life. So, in supportive housing settings, especially where the majority of the units are serving people who are homeless and who have disabilities, developers should be mindful of the Olmstead principles. People should have as much choice and independence as possible. They should have a lease and control of their own unit, have the freedom to come and go as they please, have visitors, make their own choices for daily activities, and have opportunities to participate fully in community life. And to the extent possible, people with similar disabilities should not be grouped together at the property, and they should be able to choose their own services and service provider. And some exciting news. We have a new resource for capital funding and an operating cost this year, the National Housing Trust Fund. Since the funds are limited to serve people with extremely low incomes, the agency decided that supportive housing would have a priority for these funds. The funds can be used for capital costs for new construction or the reuse of an unoccupied building. The state can also allocate up to 30% of the total funding to help pay the operating costs for assisted units for up to 15 years. This will be set up as a reserve account. If you plan to apply for the operating subsidy, there are some specific application materials and tools, including a short narrative, a calculation tool for figuring out the operating subsidy amount needed, and remember to look for the instructions for completing certain sections of the workbook to show the operating subsidy information. And finally, we want to thank you for all you do to end homelessness in Minnesota. For more information about supportive housing and long-term homelessness, please contact Vicki Farden or Joel Salzer or visit our website. Look for the Multifamily Partners section at the top of the page and then select Ending Homelessness. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this tutorial.